Hi Virgo, welcome to your June 2018 Astro Update. It's Raina here, and so in June, there are two houses that are seeing a lot of activity. The 10th house, which is the house of career, and for you this is in the sign of Gemini, and the 11th house of hopes and wishes, which is in your case, cancer. Now, I can find common ground between these two houses in one specific area, and that is the area of goals. With the 10th house, we're talking about professional goals. We are talking about achieving things. And with the 11th house, we're talking about long range goals. I was reading something the other day and they mentioned long-term goals for the 10th house. And I was like, wait a second. I had just read that for the 11th house. And actually, if you think about talking about hopes and wishes, it makes sense that these would actually be goals. I like to characterize hopes and wishes as long-range goals because it seems more pragmatic. It doesn't seem as, you know, pie in the sky Maybe that's because I have a moon in Virgo, and I think that you might appreciate that as well. So the 11th house is also the house of friendships and the groups that you belong to. And especially in July, when there will be a solar eclipse in that sector, Virgo, you can be on the brink of expanding your social network by leaps and bounds. But let's stick to June for now. And the sun will be in that 10th house for most of the month until the solstice time of the 21st. Now the sun itself in your chart, when you say, hey baby, what's your sign? You're talking about the sun sign. And the sun sign is your, this is how I characterize it, as your healthy ego. But ego not meaning, wow, I'm, I'm full of myself but meaning how you how you identify yourself in this lifetime not by descriptors like i am a woman i am um of this particular ethnicity or race or anything like that those are external designations but more of like even like what you do in the world is more of your essence i believe because it's utilizing your talents. So if you say I'm a writer or I'm a teacher, these are things that go deeper than those, you know, professions. When you say you're a writer, you're also an observer. You're also, uh, you might be like, um, very, well, you have to be very creative to be a writer. And, um, well, I guess if you're a journalist, it's a little bit different type of writing. But you have to be intellectually curious. So it says more than just like kind of surface things. Um, these are qualities that you possess that you may have possessed for many lifetimes. And it makes up your core self. Again, we always have to, I think, be, play, you know, uh, be a little bit loose about how we define ourselves because ultimately we are n nothing in the exterior world you know anything that we're dependent on to provide us uh, some kind of identity that comes from the outside world to me it seems like kind of a flimsy sort of identity but the sun is a lot of how we relate to ourselves and with the sun in your 10th house you really are embodying that career person that you associate with Capricorn who rules that house. And that makes you more ambitious in general. Mercury is also in this sector until the 12th of the month. So Mercury means that your mental energy is being um, expended in the area of what it is that you do in the, in the, in the world, how other people see you and 
you may be talking, you know, Mercury is communication with employers. If that's something that you are in the process of doing, getting a job, there just may be a lot of mental energy regarding your career for whatever reason. And then Mercury goes into the 11th house on the 12th. And so then your mind is on other things. And I, when I, when I talk about long range goals, by the way, it doesn't necessarily mean that they will be career related because your life certainly is not just based on whatever it is that you do. Hopefully Um, most people have more than one passion. And so you may be focusing on that for whatever reason. Also friendships, talking to your friends more often. That was another thing that I got from this is that I feel that towards the end of the month, you're going to be a lot more social. And while it's possible that this is career related and you're networking for some reason, it's also possible that you're coming out of hibernation in some, for some reason where, you know, the typical Virgo person, we think of the hermit in the major arcana of the Tarot that is connected to Virgo because Virgos are very comfortable being alone and you're going to be a a lot less interested in doing that as the month progresses. On the 13th, Venus which has been in your 11th house. So Venus has been in that social sector. Then Venus goes into the 12th house in Leo. So Venus can bring money, love to a person's life. In the 11th house, you can gain through networking. And that's why I I mentioned the connection to the 10th house whether it's through soliciting work through your social circle or just um, reaching out to different groups to get the word out, that can be financially advantageous. But falling in love or feeling that romantic connection with somebody, perhaps that comes from somebody that you meet through a group of friends And then on the 13th, Venus goes into a very hidden sector. And Venus in the 12th house can be quite secretive with love for whatever reason. You know, the typical place my mind goes is saying that there is some kind of extramarital thing going on. But that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes people don't want to come out public with their romance right away. They want to be able to to nurture it without, you know, the input of the people that they know. You may meet somebody through your friends and they may be like, oh, what are you, what are you guys doing? Are you and you don't want to tell them. You don't want them to know that you're actually dating. You might be introduced by them, but then you start dating secretly. It could be a case of one or both parties are um, already involved with others and they are doing something on the down low. Or this could indicate past life connection with this person that you meet. And that is like a karmic relationship, including a soulmate type relationship, but just Like I said to another sign, I think it was Leo, that um, these types of relationships, they may be karmic, but are they healthy? You know, are they really a relationship that you feel is, is good for you, that it improves your life? Just because a person feels familiar doesn't mean they're the right person. So it's a good... Um, distinction to make. On the 
same day that Venus goes into the 12th house, we have a new moon at 22 degrees of Gemini in your 10th house of career. So that's why I say that June can be a good month for career advancement for Virgo because new moon brings new opportunities and that may be very, that may include being, you know, having a promotion or something along those lines. On the 18th, Neptune turns retrograde and it's in the seventh house of committed partnership. So you've had Neptune taking up residence in this um, relationship sector for, let's see, probably about six years now, since 2012. So Neptune is in its own sign Pisces. And so that really enhances the, the Neptune influence because whenever a planet's in its own sign, you know, it's really in that essence of what it represents. Well, with Neptune, we're talking about fantasy. We're talking about um, the spiritual, not the tangible. We're talking about sometimes confusion, sometimes deception. And the fact that it's in your seventh house could have been quite challenging for some Virgo people. If you got married during this time, you may have discovered that your partner isn't who you thought he or she was. And actually, when Neptune goes retrograde on the 18th, this could pull back the curtain and reveal this in quite painful detail, that something may present itself to you that makes you realize that this person was other than you thought that he or she was. And while that may seem like a terrible thing to happen, why would anybody want to be operating under an illusion in the first place. So it actually is still working on your behalf. If you um, did get involved with somebody under false pretenses and there, they created the false pretenses. Now, uh, this can just be a time where you're not operating under delusion involving your partner, if you have kind of glorified them, rose colored glasses, you might see them in more stark reality. And that might be a little bit unnerving. However, it doesn't mean that it's the end of the relationship. It's simply that it's showing you where you may tend to be a little bit too idealistic. And, um, I always feel like the complementary signs, which are the, the signs that oppose one another. And of course, for you, that's Pisces, that they share certain things in common. And sometimes I think that Virgos can be treated um, or taken for granted a lot in relationships because of your natural unassuming nature, uh, your willingness to help others and, you know, not being demanding. I'm not saying Virgo people are perfect. You might nag uh, your partner to insan a point of insanity uh, if you're not careful, but in terms of being somebody who is very accommodating and just um, an asset to the other person, I think that that is certainly true. And it's unfortunate whenever a person like you has to deal with a relationship that is pretty one-sided because 
you are like a good partner overall. And another person may take advantage of that. So there's that. And then again, the solstice happening on the 21st in that 11th house, you become much more of a, like an honorary Aquarius, Aquarian for a month, where you are just um, very social, very interested in people from different walks of life. Maybe you are exploring things of that nature for, for whatever reason, like even in your local area, going to, going to different ethnic enclaves and going to uh, discussions, political discussions, uh, joining groups that are, have causes attached to them. Who knows? This is important on the 26th, Mars goes retrograde in Aquarius. Mars only retrogrades once every two years. So this is a fairly significant event for a personal planet. And it's going to be retrograde until August 27th. So we're talking about a two-month period. And it starts out in your sixth house of health. So Mars retrograding can slow things down. It's also the house of work. So if you are somebody who works for another person and they have orders, you may see that the work slows down. Of course, this is during the summertime, so it may be connected to the time of year. I'm, I'm talking about the Northern Hemisphere, I guess. Um, but it may be a time of year where things typically are a little bit slower. And for this this year, you really notice it. But Mars retrograde can be about you um, retracing your steps when it comes to your career or when it comes to your, um, I would say, even like if you work for yourself. I think this is particularly significant because the sixth house can be your daily schedule. And if you work for yourself, you may feel that you could be much more efficient. And there may be other extenuating circumstances that are making it so that you need to kind of alter how you do things. And maybe it's even the method of how you do things. And so you're reviewing it, you're refining it, and you may have to work harder to achieve certain things that you're trying to achieve. And you may feel like you're um, in slow motion in a sense where whenever we have like a, a retrograde happening with a personal planet, we can feel it very strongly in the sense of what momentum feels like because Mars is our momentum. It's our mojo. It's what gets us, gets us up in the morning, gets, you know, drives us. I was going to say drives us to work, but drives us. <laughs> I, that's like a double entendre because, you know, to work like a workplace or drives us just to work. If you work for yourself and you're a Virgo, chances are you're pretty efficient. But I don't know, you know, it's funny because Virgos are supposed to be OCD uh, and they're just supposed to be like clean freaks. But then I, I read in this one book, which I really respect, that sometimes it can have the opposite effect where the person's really a slob, really messy. And they attribute it to the connection with um, Pisces because Neptune you know, it's part of that opposition, uh, with Pisces and Neptune rules like a lack of order because it is, it doesn't have any boundaries, you know? And so I know this is a little bit off topic, but well, it's not because you could be, uh, trying to tweak something and feel that you, maybe you're not, that efficient. I mean, I just told you I have the moon in Virgo. I love lists. I love office supply stores, but I, 
I make lists and then I don't do what I, what I say I'm going to do on the list. I have like books filled with lists. So, you know, whether you execute the list is a different story. And I mean, anyone can make a list. So you may be like reviewing that. And then you go back into the fifth house at some point in Capricorn. Now that's for the next video because that's going to happen, I think in late July that it finally goes back into Capricorn. And it's interesting because we end the month with a full moon in Capricorn. So this gives us kind of like a hint of what the issues may be surrounding Mars going into Capricorn in July. So the full moon in Capricorn is on June 28th. Capricorn is a fellow earth sign. So it is very copacetic with you. And this is the fifth house of romance. That's pretty interesting as well as the business that you own your creative project. So if you're an artist, you might be finishing a piece. If you are in a, like a casual dating situation, you may learn something about that person. It could be a secret exposed, or you could be realizing that this is the one and you get engaged or, or you're going to get married, or whatever you're taking it to the next level. Now I wanted to say that I thought this was interesting given the fact that I mentioned Venus going into, into the 12th house on the 13th. So that could be your secret lover that you find something out about and that you find out why you're having a secret love affair. Maybe this person keeps saying, Hey, let's, you know, let's not go out during, during, um, let's not, let's not go to a restaurant in your, in my area or your area. Let's drive like an hour away to go out to dinner. And you, you keep saying to yourself, why is, why doesn't he want to go out to dinner close by? Why is he afraid of doing that? And something may illuminate that the full moons are illu illuminating. Okay. Well, that's what I have for you, Virgo. And this type of reading is like how I do my natal chart interpretations. And I really enjoy doing those because I like to analyze. And that's um, what part of the reading involves is looking at your natal chart, looking at where are these planets and in, in what houses, you know, do you have a lot of energy in one area? Cause that can point to really being obsessed with one particular area of life. And then I'm also talking about your astrological trends for the coming year. So both of those things um, are combined in one reading. And I'm going to link that reading below as well as my site in general. And I wish you the best in June. Bye.